G'day and welcome back. So in this episode here, I thought we'd try and recreate a look from the TV show, The Last of Us. So a friend of mine and myself, we shot this footage in my apartment. Now the lighting is a little bit different and obviously the camera is different than the one they used, but we got as close as we could. Now another friend of mine made that intro music. So if you'd like to see his kind of stuff, I'll leave a link below and you can check it out. He's very good. But in this series here, I thought we'd try and concentrate on recreating looks from TV shows, commercials, or anything else you would like to see. So if there's something that you would like recreated, then comment below and we'll see if we can make it. Let's jump into Resolve and see what we can do. So here we are in Resolve. Now we're gonna be trying to match this look here using this footage here. So you can download this footage if you like and you can follow along. The footage is completely free, no need to pay. You can use it on your color grading show or anything like that. The only thing you can't say is that you shot it, but anything else, go crazy. Not a worry at all. So obviously this is a much different look than this look here. This look is obviously a lot darker. The light is reddish orange. So we're gonna try and match that. Now a few caveats, of course. This area is green because that wall was green. And unfortunately with our footage here, we have a very red brick wall. So that's gonna be a little bit of a problem, but we're gonna concentrate more on the overall look of the image and more trying to match the light on his face. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure our color management is all up to scratch. So come down to your project settings here, come down to color management. This is the color management we're gonna be working with today. So color science, DaVinci YRGB, timeline color space, rec 709, output color space, same as timeline. Normally we would use DaVinci YRG color manage and then go from there. But today we're gonna to work in a wider color space. So we're gonna make two nodes, well, one extra node, sorry. So Alt S. Now in our first node here, let's go to effects. And we're gonna use a color space transform so we can work in a wider color space. Input color science, we wanna be DaVinci white gamut, four five. Input gamma, we wanna be Blackmagic Pocket 4K Gen 4. Now output color space, we want to be in DaVinci Wide Gamut and Output Gamma DaVinci Intermediate. So this is going to give us a wider color space than working in Rec. 709. But we want to deliver in Rec. 709. So what we're going to do, we're going to put another color space on our second node here. Input Color Space, DaVinci Wide Gamut. Input Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. Output Color Space, Rec. 709. And, oop, that's the wrong one. Output gamma will be gamma 2.4. So now we have our image here. So we've gone from this here to this here. So we have a nice starting point with our image. So the first thing we wanna do is get rid of this. We don't need this garbage. This is gonna be the last node. So we always wanna work before this node, okay? And everything after this node. So now let's make a new node, Alt S, and then two new nodes, Alt P. Now in our first node here, we're gonna name it Exposure, EXP. This one we're gonna call Contrast. And this one is gonna be our Saturation node. Okay, so in our Exposure node, what we wanna do is we wanna try and bring our Exposure down to match this waveform here. So this is obviously this guy here. And as you can see, we're way off, but that's okay. A lot of information is kept right down the darker areas of the image, but we still have this red spike here, which would represent this area on his face here. So in our exposure node, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna balance our image because the light is slightly different than the light they're using. When I shot it, I actually thought it was the correct color. I didn't really look at the picture properly, but their light is a little redder than the light I'm using here, but that's an easy fix. So let's balance our image real quick. And, okay, so now we have a nice balanced image. So let's bring down our brightness and our mids. Now, bring down those shadow areas or our darker areas. And as you can see, We already have a much different looking image. So here's their waveform and here's ours. We have some way to go, but 
we are off to a very good start. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's just check and make sure we're not crushing any of those shadow areas. We're looking really good. Maybe just bring it up ever so slightly. Okay. That looks pretty good for now. We have pretty good balance. Maybe just... Okay, now we're looking very good. So in our contrast node, we're going to add a little bit of contrast. So down here in contrast, let's add a little bit in. And let's change our pivot. Now, if you don't understand contrast pivot, I made a video about this on my last release. So check that one out. It'll be a link below or some little, you know, thing up here. So in pivot, let's bring this up a little bit. That's going to darken our areas, but then keep the brighter areas. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So far, so good. Now in our saturation node, I'm just going to leave it empty for now. Oh, actually, let's add a little bit in. Why not? Alrighty, looking good. Let's make a new node, Alt S, and then let's add, let's say, four more parallel nodes. Now in this one here, let's rename it, call it Look, and we'll start from here. And then we'll rename these once we get there. Now we can give ourselves some more space. So let's take off Clips and Timeline. So if you look at our reference image here, as you can see, there is a lot of red into those whiter areas. So what we're going to do, using our gain, let's push some overall red into those areas. Now, as you can see, obviously, the more red you're pushing in, the higher it is going up on our scope here. So let's bring it down a bit. And again, let's push more in and bring it down. Even further, so we want to make sure we're not crushing those dark areas. So let's go back to our exposure node here. Let's bring it up ever so slightly. Now, as you can see, our overall image has gone a little too red, but that is okay. So let's do a side by side and have a look. So a good start, not quite there just yet, obviously. We need to bring down our overall brightness. So let's make a, well, using one of our next nodes here, what we can do is adjust our overall brightness. So we'll call this one brightness. Oops, it's disconnected it. So we're gonna use the curves for this one. So I feel like this is quite bright. What we're gonna do, we're just going to come to our curve here. We're just going to bring it down ever so slightly. Right about there looks pretty good. Now again, making sure we're not crushing those darker areas. What we can do is actually go into our log and just bring up some of those shadows. If you look at this image here, as you can see, those shadows are actually pushed up. But we are very red, but that's easy fix. Alrighty, so overall, our exposure is looking good, but we have an issue. We're still getting a lot of this red. So what we're going to do here, in this node, we're going to name this one darker, and we're going to take away that redness using HDR. So in our HDR, let's make a new zone. Darker. Here's our zone here. Now to bring up your selection, press Shift H, and that will show you what you're hitting. So that looks pretty good. Go back just a little bit. Alrighty, looks like a pretty good selection. So using our new color wheel, let's just push some blue into those shadows. He put up the exposure just a little bit. So this is beforehand, and this is after. Now we have a much better looking image. We are more balanced, and it's not one big clump of red. We could probably go a little bit bluer. So far, so good. Now in this node here, what we want to do, we want to bring down a lot of this brightness here. Then we'll make another node. We'll bring down a lot of this brightness here. Because if you look at this image here, the way I've lit it is actually wrong, <laughs> because this area here is a lot darker. Then what I've made it here, but that is an easy fix. 
So in our node here, we're going to call this one ear. So in our ear, let's make a new zone and call it ear. So again, selecting ear, bring it across. Now, sometimes you will select the wrong one, which I've done then. So go back to ear and just make sure you click the right one. Otherwise, it's not a good time. So in our ear, we'll say about there looks pretty good. Because now what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a power window around. And that'll stop us from hitting this area here. Looks pretty good. So in our ear color wheel, what we want to do is we want to soften it out a lot. We just want to take some focus away from this area. So let's bring that exposure down just a little bit. Now let's go to blur and sharpen and blur it out. Now if you go full screen, this is beforehand and this is afterwards. Now it's not a massive change, but it is focusing our eye to this area here, which is obviously more important than somebody's ear. Alrighty, so let's make a, another node, Alt-P. Now this is going to be for this area here. So again, using a power window, let's use the old pen tool and to make our selection here and soften it right in, soften it right out. Now we probably don't need to make a HDR for this. You just bring it down ever so slightly. If we bring it down too much, let's say about here, obviously that's extreme, but then you can see the vignette. You never want your audience to see you have a vignette going on. So this is before the adjustment and this is afterwards. So it's subtle, but it does put the attention much more on this area here again, which is the most important part of the image. Now, if we were to look at our image here, in terms of color on the face, we're not quite there. So again, what we're going to do is make another HDR one parallel. This is going to be our, we'll call this one skin face. These are fantastic names. Make sure to remember them all. Now in our HDR, we're going to be selecting this area here. Let's make a new zone and we'll call it skin face and we'll select the brightness one. So in skin face, again, shift H to bring it up. Now we have our nice selection here. And again, we're going to use a power window to avoid the other areas of the image. Again, soften it right out. It's always really important. Now let's take power window off. We'll bring this one across. Alrighty, back to our HDR. Now in skin face, we're going to put in a lot more ready orange. And then we're going to bring down some of that exposure and we're just going to work it around till we get something we like. So that looks really good. So this is beforehand and then this is afterwards. But there's one more thing that we can do. We need to add a little bit more density so we can bring some of the exposure down. Now we're almost there, but not quite. So let's go down to the hue and make a slight adjustment. Let's go to the exposure and make the slightest little adjustment. Alrighty, now to top this image off, so let's make a, another parallel node. And in this node here, what we're going to do is if you look at this image here, the reason why our face looks a little bit too flat is because they have this nice little pockets of light. So what we can do is this one here, we're going to call face light. Now we're just going to adjust this area here and this will give our skin more of a three dimensional look to it. It's a little bit flat at the moment. So again, HDR, let's make a new one. We'll call it light face. So that's a great name. Now in light face, shift H and we're going to make the slightest change. In your light face color wheel, bring up that exposure. 
just a little bit. Now in full screen, this is our image beforehand and this is our image afterwards. And as you can see, that's really just tying the whole image together. One more little thing that we should do is our dark areas look a little green. That is no problem. Let's go back to our darker node. And what we're going to do is we're just going to push it towards the red a little bit more. And even just actually lift them up just a tiny bit. Maybe what we can do is just bring down a lot of this brightness here. So again, new node, this one here. Let's just make a simple power window. Bring it across. In our curves, just bring it down ever so slightly. So that's with our correction off, and that's with our correction on. That's just giving a much nicer looking image. Alrighty, I feel like our image is pretty much spot on, except I feel like we're just a little too green in the shadows. So again, let's just have a check. Yeah, we are slightly off. So what we can do is just push a little bit more neutrality into those greens. Alrighty, now the last thing I wanna do is I just wanna make one more node and this one here, we're just gonna create a slight little bit more contrast. So let's make a point here and just using our curves and just using our curves, bring it down ever so slightly. So this is beforehand and this is after. So all in all, pretty good. I wouldn't say it's perfect. Obviously this is a little too bright and this is annoying because it's so red compared to this green, but can't really do anything about that. But all in all, I think exposure looks really good. We've matched the color pretty nicely. Looking pretty good. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave any comments below, anything you'd want to see or any criticism or suggestions you have. More than happy to receive them. I've been Drew from Gingo Productions and have a great day.